But now officially this is opening day at the Eagle Summer Camp. So far this has been the Eagle Summer of Discontent, reflected today by the absentees on opening day. We anticipated the absence of the top draft picks and the free agent veterans who don't have to show up for a week. But a signed veteran who won't show up is reserve quarterback Joe Fasacic Wade. You know, I'm very disappointed. You know, uh, number one, you know, Joe was probably the best friend I had on this team, and, uh, and, and he was kind of like a coach to me. He was a friend and a coach, and uh, we were roommates in training camp, roommates on the road, and, and he did a lot to help me and prepare me to play games, and conversely, I helped him. So um, not only is a competitor gone uh, and a guy fighting for the same job I was, but, but a friend is... He's gone, and I'm going to miss Joe. He was interested, they say, in dealing with Buffalo for the rights to Joe Cribbs. They're talking about it. An excellent runner, all pro capabilities, a great runner, a great receiver. He bought out his contract with Birmingham of the USFL, and maybe the Eagles might be able to get Joe Cribbs. To baseball, Phillies are the... ...their first two-a-day workouts with their first eight draft picks missing from camp. Late this afternoon, second-round draft pick quarterback Randall Cunningham signed with the Eagles. There is still a very obvious problem. It's called team morale. Yesterday, the Eagles waived quarterback Joe Pasargic. Joe Pasargic played six years with the Philadelphia Eagles and did a good job always there behind Ron Jaworski when the Eagles needed him. Today, Joe is looking for another job. I had time to talk with Joe this evening at his home, and it looks obvious that the Eagles waived Joe not because of the youth movement, as the Eagles claim, but the fact that he makes more money than the young players. I think pretty much so. It's, you know, it's evident with the other players and the other positions that our owner has taken on with the team that it is a, is a money decision, but that's up to him. I feel, you know, definitely, everybody can kid themselves that there are definitely some problems, you know, within a team, within the organization, and... You know, I've, I still have some friends on this football team. I hope it gets straightened out. Can you believe that they're going to go into the season with a qu one quarterback with experience and really no no experience reserves? That doesn't seem like a, a winning attitude they're taking right off the bat if they go in with that kind of attitude. Uh, as a matter of fact, when we were here uh, three years ago, we brought in a third quarterback, Dan Pastorini, as sort of a more of insurance product for us. So we have three quarterbacks that could play. Again, I'm just amazed. I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed by the whole situation. That I was, you know, I'm a eight-year veteran in the NFL, that I was treated this way, and I, you know, I express a lot of loyalty to the team and to the people of Philadelphia, and to the, you know, into the football club, and I was treated with this thing. It's just very disappointed, to say the least. There's a real problem with the philosophy in this situation and in Norman Brayman's philosophies. Norman Brayman wants players to work for a common goal. That comes from teamwork and hard work. Joe Pasargic has been the perfect soldier, the real team player. For six years, he always did what was asked of him, was there when the Eagles needed him, and never complained. So what does he get? A good buy. Why? Because the Eagles save a mere $25,000, nothing by football standards, if they waive Joe before the opening of camp. This football team has no experience at quarterback behind Ron Jaworski, and they don't even let the sergeant work for a job. It now looks like it's money over ability. What's unbelievable is Coach Marion Campbell has no say in this personnel decision. The Eagles call the youth movement. It seems to me that youth is spelled M-O-N-E-Y. Plain and simple. Second round draft pick out of Nevada, Las Vegas, agreed to terms yesterday. The young quarterback will be at camp tomorrow, but Scott Palmer was with him tonight at the airport, and he filed this. Report. This evening, quarterback Randall Cunningham became the newest Eagle to fly into Philadelphia. The second round pick is glad his contract battle with new owner Norman Brayman is over. I'm happy it's finally over with because uh, it's, time down to, it's time to get down to business now. I'm ready to play football and uh, I've been waiting since the draft and I've been waiting all season since the California ball. Now I'm ready to get on the field. Now that Joe Pasarczyk has been released, Randall Cunningham is the likely number two quarterback behind Ron Jaworski. But Cunningham isn't ready to call himself a backup just yet. If I have to practice tomorrow, I'm going for the number one spot. That's how it's going to be. Jim Steiner is the agent who worked out the contract for Cunningham with Norman Brayman. I asked him about negotiating with the Eagles' new owner. I'd rather be with him than against him. Having Randall Cunningham in training camp should take some of the heat off the Eagles. But until they sign their number one pick, offensive lineman Kevin Allen, the air conditioner in the Eagles' front office may have to run overtime. I'm Scott Palmer, Channel 6 Action News, with the Eagles' Randall Cunningham. After in the club, and I'm not saying this specifically about Kevin Allen, I'm talking about this in general, uh, I think that you have to keep your options open and do what you have to do to help the team. Do what you gotta do. Florida Kingdom, Allentown, Pennsylvania, lots of action. Station.
I'm extremely happy, and I can't say enough about Otho Davis, Steve Watterson, and Tim Jorgensen. They did an outstanding job of rehabbing me, and um, you know, coming back in such a short period of time from such a big injury uh, makes me feel good, and I'm ready. They had to their draft problem. Remember Leonard Mitchell? He hurt. You know, he came to camp hurt actually. Last year they had a tackle, Rusty Russell. He gets hurt the first week, and he's gone. It's a new year and a new chance at the position crying for help. Offensive tackle, where they drafted first Kevin Allen, who was a no-show with a contract hassle. He has to beat me out, and he has to beat Moraldi out. So I'm here, he's not. You know, I like him a lot. He's a good guy. But like I said, I'm here, he's not. He's definitely going to have to play catch-up when he gets in because it's going to hurt him by missing. He's not going to be as good a safe as he thinks he is. Because I thought I, I thought I was in good shape until I came in. But um, I'm okay right now, and I'm just going to progress every week. Randall Cunningham arrived last night. Today he was in there throwing a the football. Norman Freeman arrives on Saturday. The Vets will arrive on Friday, or should. The Eagles, believe me, like a good soap opera, they're going to be a continuing story all season long. Awesome. This is going to be the most and interesting. And a big hit by... Owen Ryan deep off the wall for an inside-the-park home run. Later, Vaughn said he hit the game winner with a borrowed bat, a smaller piece of lumber he b borrowed from Luis Aguayo. There's such a short bat that you have to be perfect with it. If you pull off at all, you're gonna you're gonna have a tough time. And that's been my biggest problem here the last month is staying on the ball. And um, I'll probably use it tomorrow and just try to go the other way and, and uh, hope I can stay in there with the short bat and turn on the ball. Do you figure you might have to make a deal with Louie to uh, trade bats or? I have what? those bats in my locker. I just didn't have any out on the field. Uh, um, so I just picked up one of his and, and went up there with it. Another name to the list of who may ask the birds for a trade. Bigfoot is also upset, just like about everyone else on the team, with the big contracts given to Ray Ellis and Greg Brown. Harrison right there may or may not be at training camp tomorrow when the veterans are due to report. Wes Hopkins, Joel Williams, and Wilbert Montgomery have already asked to be traded. Could be more than a few empty bucks, bunks at West Have the entire squad, maybe. One of the veterans that's been there already is the wide receiver, Kenny Jackson. Last year's number one pick who started nine games and missed a lot of time because of injury. He is not a no-show, he's an early show. This year, more than any other, that's got to be an event. Last year I got hurt, as everybody knows, and I was very upset that I didn't play the type of football that I'm capable of playing because of my injury. But I think, you know, if we can get off on, on the right track and win those early games like we should have last year, we would have a lot better season. It's amazing what the difference a year makes. You know, experience teaches you so much. It's not only sitting in the classroom and learning, but it's actually on the field doing the right things. And I've been fortunate to work with the type of people that have, you know, given me some tips here and there on how to go out and run those certain type of rides. So now, instead of just going out and thinking, I'm reacting, and that's very valuable. Dennis Harrison, Wes Hopkins, Joel Williams, Dean Moraldi could be among the missing. The Some interesting days ahead for the Philadelphia Eagles. Wilbert Montgomery is still an Eagle, but that's only a matter of time before he's gone. Tomorrow, the first day of camp for the Vets, and it could be interesting. One of the bright spots last year for the Eagles was pass receiving. It could be the same this year. Our Bruce Casella went to Westchester to take a look at this year's wide receivers. One of the more solid positions on this Eagles football team is the wide receivers. Number 81, Kenny Jackson, is back from a separated shoulder injury. And the number one draft pick from 1984 is building confidence. It's going to be really interesting this year. And I think what happens is, you know, me and Ron can get the chance to understand each other a lot better, which is very important. And uh, I think last year, you know, we were starting to get there. And, uh, and this year is going to be very exciting because we got some great receivers. Joining these rookies and selected veterans tomorrow will be the star of the show, Mike Quick. With Quick and Jackson healthy, the Eagles' pass receiving should soar. They give us great balance. They give us great depth because now, you know, in nickel situations, we're even stronger and that we're coming in with a Woodruff or a Hoover or something to that effect. The rookies will find it tough to make this Eagle football team. Number 80, Ralph Pacifico, knows the situation but still feels he has a shot. All I can do is, you know, make this a learning experience and, and a positive one at that and come out every day and try and do my best and just hope for the best. The Eagles ranked 11th in pass offense last year. With Ron Jaworski back at a healthy Kenny Jackson, the Eagles wide receivers should once again be the pride of the team. From Westchester, Pennsylvania, to Eagles training camp, Bruce Casella, 
eyewitness. Miami oh. Dolphins have called him up. He's flying mm. there tomorrow and could be the backup quarterback for the Dolphins. Got a good shot at him? Wow. Uh, with their backup, Don Strzok, holding out, I would say yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, the count is one and two to Bob Denier to show you the flight of the Chicago Cubs. If you take Denier, Sandberg, and Matthews, the one, two, three hitters in the lineup, total, they've missed 83 games this year. Pop Fly and Mariano Duncan, the shortstop. So Denier is jammed and pops it up, one away. And there's one of the reasons why the Dodgers are in first place. This kid has come from nowhere. To either Seattle or Detroit is still on hold, but close. The talks with other absentees continue at a snail's pace. But the latest is that Wes Hopkins' situation may be clarified. Owner Norman Brayman is to meet face-to-face -face with Hopkins' agent this evening. Meantime, the wait continues on the Wilbert Montgomery deal. Oh, I don't think we're any further away. Uh, I, uh, I think we're where we were with Montgomery. I thought that uh, it could have been done yesterday, and uh, I think that uh, I think it can be done today. Uh, whether it will be or not, uh, I don't know. Well, the absentees should affect play, but veteran Kenny Clark says not much if they come back soon. Of course, we get to the season. I, I would say uh, up to about a week to two weeks before the season. Um, you know, even even during the season, if some of the guys came back during the season, I, it still wouldn't be an adjustment, a difficult adjustment, because still we got uh, 16 games to play. So the Eagles, with enough problems with the full squad, continue to operate at some sputtering engines as the contract and trade has... Here's the latest word. Wes Hopkins will be in camp tomorrow. His agent met with Norman Brayman last night. He's that defensive back. Mel Hoover, a free agent who was supposed to have agreed to a contract, still hasn't showed up, and this time they've said, forget it. The Eagles have closed the door on Melvin. Wilbur Montgomery can go to Detroit. But here's the information now. Wide receiver Mark Nichols has been offered. He's got a hamstring pull, and the Eagles want Jeff Chadwick. Well, so would I. Seattle has said to have made its final offer. Tackle Sid Abramowitz and Sam Clancy was with the Memphis Showboats. They own his rights. Denver still talking. Now, the Eagles are also unhappy. From what I've been hearing around the league, they are calling about running backs. So if Eric Dickerson, for instance, shows up in L.A., they'd like to talk about Barry Redden. And we'll talk more tomorrow about the Philadelphia Eagles. In the National League, the Cubs are playing the St. Louis Cardinals. For the pictures, let's go to Wrigley Field. Watch this first play. Interesting. Steal by Vince Coleman the third. He, steal, he slides right past the bag. That is a stolen base, but now they got him, they got him in a rundown, right? Well, watch the Cubs really foul up this rundown. There's nobody covering home plate. <laughs> Isn't that nice? The pitcher is in no man's land at third base where he shouldn't have been. And the Cubs come back, though. Larry Boa with the bases loaded, triples here. The Cubs are now leading it in the seventh, the score 8-2. to two. Some good news today at the Eagles camp. Well, not quite yet. Veteran free safety Wes Hopkins has ended his holdout and will report to practice tomorrow. Now, the Eagles are not saying whether some concessions were made, but I, I've got to believe that something was done to help his contract. That makes eight veterans left to report, and number one draft pick Kevin Allen. One of the positions that has been unaffected by the holdouts is the tight end. They are a, a proud bunch of, and a lots of size and depth. Our Bruce Casella was in camp this morning to watch the tight ends hit the sleds. The Eagle tight ends are maneuvering toward perfection. The sled is their tool as they prepare for the new season. We've got uh, tight ends. Uh, they're, they're big guys. They've got ability. Of course, Spagnola missed the Pro Bowl by hair last year, he's, uh, and he's determined to get there. Spagnola led the team last year in receptions with 65. Vito Cab is a worthy backup who is coming into camp better than ever. I'm a little lighter than I was last year, and I came in stronger and uh, worked a lot with the quarterbacks in the offseason. And I feel really confident this uh, this camp and uh, catching the ball well and blocking well. And we have five good tight ends in camp, and uh, that just makes every one of us better because we push one another, we work together hard, uh, we compete, and. Uh, and a good tight end coach is playing cans, and it's a nice unit. The talk of the tight ends this training camp is Tim Brewster. He has really impressed the coaches. I feel like I can uh, I can contribute to the Eagles with, with my abilities, pass catching, and also special teams. It's going to be, I think it's going to go down to the wire, and the guy that can contribute most on special teams, I think they will keep as a third tight end here on this team. Fourth-year man Lawrence Sampleton is also battling for a job, as is rookie Dexter Edmonds. Only three will make the team. From the Eagles training camp, Bruce Casella, Eyewitness Sports. Hey, the Wilbert Montgomery trade remains on hold. Channel 10 Sports has learned that Detroit first offered receiver Mark Nichols. The Eagles want receiver Jeff Chadwick. 
Seattle is offering lineman Sid Abramowitz and defensive tackle Sam Clancy. The Eagles may go after running back Barry Redden of the Rams if Eric Dickerson reports to the Rams camp. Stay tuned. Also, they're closer to signing... Red, Brad, an important Eagle, comes back. I think we're going to see a lot of developments, Jim, in the next couple of days. The Eagles, though, will have Wes Hopkins back in camp tomorrow morning. Hopkins ended his holdout late this afternoon. He and the Eagles have resolved their contract differences. Neither side will say how it was done, only that the Eagles' safety will report in time for tomorrow morning's workout. Wes Hopkins is in, but wide receiver Mel Hoover is out. The Eagles say they will no longer negotiate with him and will try and trade Hoover immediately. Coach Marion Campbell says he got tired of waiting for his holdout wide receiver to show up. Uh, I've got some people out here working hard, want to play, and uh, I, I think right now I'm comfortable with uh, the likes of Garrett in uh, Gooseby or someone of that nature taking his spot. You ever try to contact him personally? I mean, why do this to a young man without sitting down maybe trying to figure out what's in his mind? Well, uh, I, I, I'm not concerned about what's in his mind. I'm concerned about our football team, and uh, that, that I'm not concerned about. There was another merger today in the United States Football League. The Houston Gamblers have merged with the New Jersey Generals. That means the USFL's top quarterback, Houston's Jim Kelly, will be in the same backfield with the league's top running back, Herschel Walker. It also means quarterback Doug Flutie will probably play somewhere else. This all depending, of course, on whether the USFL plays again. He has a chance to be a lot better. The Eagles would not say whether, the renegotiated con or whether they renegotiated the contract, but the guess here is something was done. One Eagles holdout will definitely not be back this season. The Eagles uh, thought they had a contract agreement with Mel Hoover, but Hoover changed his mind. The Eagles have made up their mind. Mel Hoover is now out of here. I've made a decision at wide receiver, and then Mel Hoover does not seem to be able to make his mind up what he wants to get done, so uh, we're not going to bring Mel back. Uh, I feel comfortable with the likes of Garrity and, and uh, Gooseby and Johnson and some of the young guys coming in and taking that spot. The United States Football League, with many quality players getting ready uh, to go to the NFL, seems like they're going to be out of business, too. Quarterback Steve Young is visiting today with the Tampa Bay Bucks. There was also a merger today in the USFL. The New Jersey Generals owner Donald Trump, right there, and owner Steve Ross, he is on the other side, we'll see him, and there he is, Steve Ross, have agreed to merge the two teams, the Houston Gamblers, they would play in the Jersey Meadowlands unless they have trouble getting available dates. I think it's obvious what's happening here. They want to get into the NFL because they have a pretty good team.